Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update for the 10th of January 2021. Uh, as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe, comment and share. Uh, a number of new changes this week. First, as always, new videos. I created my kind of annual State of the Union of Azure Infrastructure video. This is just over two hours long. Um, so it's very broad in what it covers, but it's how all the different Azure infrastructure pieces actually kind of fit together and where some of the current functionality is. I then did a, a pretty quick video just on, look, if I was going to approach learning Azure today in 2021, what are some of the key resources I would use, including uh, getting access to Azure, optimizing the Azure use to try and stretch any credits I have as far as possible, and then some kind of Microsoft and non-Microsoft resources to actually use. On to what's actually new. So on the compute side, it's really just this one new type of virtual machine has gone generally available. Um, this is based all around kind of machine learning, artificial intelligence, using CUDA, TensorFlow, and a number of other frameworks, and uh, some graphics using NVIDIA Grid, but these are in kind of West US 2, West Europe and Korea Central regions right now. And there is kind of this schedule for additional rollout. So it's all around these kind of very powerful GPU based virtual machines. I think this has 64 non multi threaded um, AMD Epic processors. On the networking side, there's been the ability to define NSG flow logs using ARM templates for a long time, but there was no built-in ARM template. So now there are two built-in policies around NSG flow logs, either to detect the absence of the flow log configuration or to actually go and kind of deploy if it doesn't exist. Remember, flow logs are those layer four informational logs about the various flows happening in the environment. So if we actually jumped over, and let's kind of take a look. If from within here, I just go and look at Azure policy, and we look at the definitions, if I now go and filter based on flow log, we can see there's now two. So one is this, flow log should be configured. So that's just going to go and audit if I have here, we can see kind of well, if the type equals network security group, and the count of flow logs will is zero, then it's going to go and audit that fact. But then there's also deploy the flow log. So in this case, the actions actually going to be a deploy if not exists and we'll go through and actually configure that. You can see here there's various parameters you would configure on that to complete the configuration. So it's something you've been able to do for a while if you created your own ARM template to define the policy. Well now there are just these inbox policies actually for you. So before you had to create your own. On the storage side, so the Azure NetApp files, this is a fully first party Azure service, but using NetApp filers gives us kind of NFS and SMB uh, storage integrated into a virtual network. Well, now there's this app consistent snapshot capability in preview. So if I think about what this is, I have snapshot capabilities, a point in time view of the contents of my Azure NetApp files. But if I think about many types of third party database, if I just snapshot the volume as is, it's not that useful, it's not consistent. So there's this new AZ AZ snap utility I run inside the Linux virtual machine that's using that NetApp filer. And what this is going to do is really two things. It's going to, from within the OS, make the data on disk consistent, kind of like volume shadow copy service in Windows. So for those Linux based third party databases like SAP HANA, it's going to flush everything out to disk to get it in a consistent state. And then it will talk to the ARM endpoint to trigger that snapshot to actually get created on Azure NetApp files. So this utility now 
I'm going to run it inside that OS. Uh, more likely, it's going to be scheduled like a cron job or something. But it will actually go and trigger that, get me consistent inside the OS in terms of what's on disk, and then trigger the Azure Resource Manager to talk to the filer to create the snapshot. It's actually a pretty big deal. If we think about using Azure NetApp files for that very high performance storage we want for those kind of databases, the ability to now create an app consistent snapshot is super important. Actually, a whole bunch of miscellaneous things. So Azure AD one-time passcode has gone generally available. Now, if you remember what this is all about is the idea that, hey, if we think we have our Azure AD tenant, and that's got all of our company's users in it, and those generally probably come from Active Directory synced via Azure AD Connect. And then there's a whole bunch of different services will trust that tenant. So this call cool, this is Azure AD Tenant 1. That's my tenant for my company. And then I have a whole bunch of different services. It could be Azure, it could be Microsoft 365, it could be kind of third-party services. And all of these trust that particular tenant. Now I've got partners, and those partners I want to give access to certain assets I have. It could be Azure resources, it could be SharePoint documents, it could be something else in those third-party clouds. And I don't want to create them an account in my Azure AD. That's hard work for me to manage. That's horrible for the partner having to remember another account. It's horrible for that partner company now having to worry about another account they have that I'd have to somehow go and manage or deprovision or something else. So I want that other person to be able to use their own identity if possible. Now that other identity could be an Azure AD account, it could be a Microsoft account, it could be a Gmail account, it could be by a direct federation. So that could be WS Fed, it could be SAML. But what about if they're none of those things? So ordinarily we think about the authentication happening here and then the authorization, i.e. conditional access, and then RBAC happening over here. But if none of those things apply, what's left? So what's left is probably, well, they have an email account, and that email account is controlled by their company. So what one-time passcode is, as you would expect, when they try to authenticate against my Azure AD to get access to something, they're going to get sent a one-time passcode to their mailbox, which proves they still have access to the mailbox. If they've left the company, you would assume they've lost access to the mailbox, so wouldn't be able to receive the code anymore. And then they type that code in. And I can show this super quickly. So over here, um, I'm actually logged in as a Yahoo Mail account. And obviously, I get all this advertising everywhere. And then what I'm going to try and do is go to Azure, um, and I'll use the SavileTech.net Azure AD tenant. So I'm giving it a domain hint. And then I'll actually try and log in as my Yahoo account. So I'll say, well, John Sav007 at yahoo.com. So I've already added that as a guest user. So what it's saying is, hey, look, we're sending a code to your mailbox. So in my Yahoo mailbox at some point, once I can get through the advertising, um, I should see that email arrive. So there it is. So they've sent me this one-time passcode. So I can now take that, paste it in, and now I have authenticated. So then the regular authorization would kick in against conditional access, all the RBAC, all of the regular same stuff would apply. But what it's essentially enabling me to do is I can now have guests to my Azure AD that if I can't use any of these other methods, which would be preferred, they don't really want to have to get a code and type it in. I'd rather be able to kind of almost single sign in with my existing identity. But if I can't, uh, this is available. And I'll do a more deeper dive video on this next week and post it. This is kind of a, a cool thing um, that's now available. So that's now GA. So that's the one-time passcode for Azure AD. 
There's a new application change analysis user interface um, in preview. So I talked about this actually a few weeks ago. So what the application change analysis is all about is I can think about, well, I'll show it to you. It's based on the Azure resource graph. And what we can actually now do is if I go to application change analysis, you can see here, it's basically tracking well, changes that occur. So it's looking at the resources I have, and if it changes, I can kind of see down here and see, well, what exactly the various changes might be, uh, what the change detection time was. But this user interface is really not super friendly. So what I'm gonna do is paste in, there's a feature flag where I can go and turn on the new view. So if I turn on the new view, you can see, well, it's a very different interface. It's showing more than 10 entries. There's now this great capability. For example, I can do various types of filters I could add. I could, for example, add only certain resources I want to be able to see, for example. Um, I could change the time window on the things I'm actually seeing. So there's a whole bunch of different things I can actually do. So let's change this, for example, hey, I just want to look at storage accounts. So then it's changing what I'm seeing. But it's a, a more friendly interface. It's going to be easier for me to use, better to see kind of those large scale things. So here, hey, look, I can see the various things. Hey, look, the SKU name. I can see on the storage account um, on the 8th, changed from LRS, I'm looking over here, to GRS. So it's just a, a nicer interface that's going to be available for us to actually be able to use that resource graph-based tra tracking. So if something breaks, I can now go and look at this application change analysis and see, well, what changed around this time? And it may help me actually fix the problem. Um, the Azure Security Center, there's the December 2020 update. I've covered most of these things um, in the previous weeks. This is kind of a summary, but I've got the link in the description below. So you can go and check that out. Um, Azure Defender for SQL, there's really a, a number of different areas around this. Remember, Azure Defender is that deep um, protection for SQL. So what's gone GA for the first part is actually SQL um, on machines. So this could be SQL on VMs on premises, SQL in other clouds. So now Azure Defender for SQL has gone GA for that. Um, also, Defender for Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool has gone GA. And there's also a new experience around the security center for Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Managed Instance. Remember, you can turn this on at a subscription um, level, which is part of Azure Security Center. Turn on, hey, I want it for SQL. And then at an instance level, let's actually go and take a look. I can go and get kind of that nice experience. So if I quickly go and look at, for example, my databases, what I can now do if I look at a particular instance, you can see this is integrated in, if I go and look at Security Center, why well, I quickly kind of get this high level overview of kind of the recommendations around it, security incidents, uh, vulnerabilities, it's all tracked within this new experience and um, within the actual database and the database server. Cross-service data explorer, um, log analytics, i.e. Azure Monitor query is now in preview. This is all about the idea that, hey, I can think about, well, I might have kind of a, a log analytics workspace I might have kind of an Azure Data Explorer environment. I might have multiple of those. And then I've got some user doing queries against the Log Analytics API, against the Azure Data Explorer. And what I could now do is within whatever one I'm doing, I can actually now do cross kind of workspace queries, i.e. I can think about joins across these. Also, if I'd done an export, from Log Analytics to, for example, Blob Storage, well, I can also now actually do a query 
from Data Explorer into that structured, that table structured export into Blob. So they've introduced in Preview this now ability to give me a lot more flexibility if my data is distributed over maybe um, these uh, Azure Data Explorer environments, if I've got stuff in Log Analytics, well, I can still now do a single query um, and join that data uh, between them. So that's that capability. There's a change coming to activity alerts, and it's all about the description. And I, I'll show you what it looks like today. And essentially it boils down to in the activity log, today the description is of the actual alert. What's changing is in the description, it will actually be the alert um, definition description then there'll be a new separate field for the actual description of the event that triggered the alert. So if I look today, so we jump over to this. If I quickly just go to, for example, if I go to monitoring over here and I look at my alerts and I, I triggered one earlier just by changing the storage account key. You can see right now the description isn't really anything. And there's kind of this blank area over here. So what's actually going to change, and I'll actually fire off because I did the link. If we look at what's coming, so here you're going to have this new activity log event description. And what the documentation is telling you here is, look, to make this consistent across all of the various types of alerts and the payload, there's going to be this new field activity log event description will contain you the description from the actual activity log event. Whereas the fired alert property description will contain the alert rule description. So basically there's a change coming and so if you're using that maybe as part of some logic you're going to want to change your logic to instead of looking at description you're going to go and look at this new activity log event description so that's coming um, on april fool's day again some of these dates where these things coming are very unfortunate it's not a joke um, but first of april i the next quarter uh, that change is taking effect and finally, uh, a new uh, Chile region has been announced, um, so that's coming. So that's it for this week. Uh, I hope this was useful. As always, if there's additional questions, um, please just comment below. I do review them. Um, if not, until next week, stay safe.